Okay, camera rolling. Check. Screen recording is going. Microphone. Got audio. We got audio. I think we're good. Just a quick sip of water. Yesterday, I tried recording this video like four times. The first three times I stopped short because my camera settings were off and I just had too many mistakes and it was a mess. The fourth time, I actually made it all the way through without any issues. There were no camera issues. I said everything I needed to say. It was great. And I went and I imported the footage from my camera and I went to go bring my screen recording footage into the correct folder. And that's when I realized I never recorded my screen. So... <sighs> Take five. A couple weeks I put out a video, it was one of the first videos that I filmed in this new space, and I got a few comments about how they loved the look of the new space and the color grading of the new space. They likened it to Peter McKinnon, thank you so much, but they asked me if I could show people how I did the color grade for this space, and I said, sure, maybe I'll make a video about it. I put it on the ideas list, but I had other priorities, so I didn't really jump on it right away, but then a couple weeks later, I put out another video, and I got a few more comments saying how they love the color grade and they want to know how I did it. And so, you know, who am I to deny people who want to learn something? Today, we're going to go step by step through the color grade that I use in this space. So hopefully you can create something similar. And we're not just going to do it with one piece of footage. We're not just sticking with the black magic raw in this video. We're going to do this with a piece of log footage and with some 8-bit rec 709. And we're going to see how that holds up. It should be fun. And on top of that, I'm giving away these looks as power grades for free to my channel members. So if you're not a channel member yet and you want access to things like free presets and a special area in the Discord server and monthly live editing trainings, which I swear are coming back soon, Thank you for being patient. Uh, just click the join button below this video, sign up. It's only a few bucks a month. We'd love to have you. And maybe while you're down there, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. I got a ton of filmmaking and video editing content on this channel, and I don't want you to miss any of it. Also, huge thanks to Taskade for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Now, before we jump into the actual grading part of this video, I, I need to say something that's very, very important. Guys, in order to get this grade right, you gotta get it right in camera. White balance and exposure are super important. You, you need the right lighting. If I didn't have these practicals behind me, if I didn't have this key light above me, this, this video would look completely different. So get it right in camera or else you can't get it right in the grade. That being said, I'm hoping that this power grade will work across multiple different types of footage, but if you want your space to look like my space, huh, my space, you remember that? Make sure that you get everything right in camera, okay? Okay, so we're in the color page in DaVinci Resolve. I've got three clips here ready for grading. We've got a piece of black magic raw. This is the footage that I use in all of my videos. This is what all of my footage looks like when I bring it into DaVinci Resolve. Next to that, we've got a piece of, again, Blackmagic Film Gen 5, but this isn't Blackmagic RAW. This is actually ProRes 422HQ, which means we're gonna lose access to our RAW camera controls, which is gonna play a big part here in a minute. And then next to that, wow, look at that face. I look like I'm I just want to hurt somebody. Man, who hurt you? Anyway, this is a piece of 8-bit Rec. 709 footage from the handy dandy Canon SL2, the first camera that I ever used to make videos other than a phone. So let's start with our Black Magic RAW footage. The first thing that we need to do is actually go into DaVinci Wide Gamut, which for those of you who don't know is a larger color space. It's like the largest color space that we've ever worked with. It's it's super, super great. And it gives us some pretty cool nifty features like the ability to use the HDR color wheels. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff. I haven't actually done a full video on DaVinci Wide Gamut, but a few people have. So I will go ahead and link those below. In the meantime, let's head over to our project settings by clicking this gear in the bottom right hand corner of our screen. We're going to make sure we're in color management. Go to color science and we're going to change from davinci yrgb to davinci yrgb color managed 
and we're gonna change Resolve Color Management Preset from SDR Rec 709 to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and everything else is gonna stay the same, so we'll go ahead and click Save. And this is one of the cool things about shooting in RAW and using DaVinci Wide Gamut. It will actually read your footage metadata and it will pick out the color science that you use to film your video and it'll create a Rec. 709 conversion based on that metadata. So we don't have to do a Rec. 709 conversion here. It's already done. It's great. Let's move on. And uh, for now, let's actually get rid of our clips. So if we click clips right here, now we've got a little bit more space to work with. Let's go ahead and create some nodes and go ahead and label them. I'm gonna make them just a tad bigger. All right, there we go. So we're gonna label this first node primaries. And since we already did our Rec. 709 conversion, we may not actually need to do anything in primaries because we also have access to our camera controls. So there, that that's good. So let's go ahead, add a new serial node. This one is going to be labeled teal. That says teak. Let's go ahead and say teal. And then we're going to add a layer node and we're going to label that one orange. So this look is actually, for the most part, a basic teal and orange look with just one tweak. We'll go over that uh, in, in just a little bit. For now, let's create the rest of our nodes. Let's go ahead and hit our layer mixer and we're going to add a new serial node. This one's going to be labeled custom curves, not curbs. Wow, I can't type today, guys. Curves, there we go. And add one more serial node and we'll label that one Luma versus Saturation. There we go, we've got our notes. Now this is actually, I think, a very, very important part. I tend to get lost in my color grades sometimes and if something goes wrong, I have a hard time going back and remembering what I did where and labeling these nodes, building out our node tree ahead of time really, really helps keep things organized and allows me to go back and know exactly what I did in what node and allow me to make quick changes when I need it. So this is a good, I don't do it all the time, but when I don't do it, I definitely pay the price. So build out your node trees, label your nodes, you'll be good to go. All right, now the first thing we need to do is actually bring up our exposure a little bit. We're a little bit dark here. I want my skin tones to be a little bit higher up. I want these darker areas to be just a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our camera raw controls. We're gonna change decode using to clip. And we're gonna change our ISO to, if my mouse will work correctly, 640. That's much, much better. I like the look of that. So let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna to go to our orange node and we're gonna go ahead and qualify our oranges. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can use the eyedropper and qualify our skin and just take whatever orange goes with it. But I'm not gonna do that in this case. I'm just going to aim for orange in general and especially oranges that are in the like mid-tones and highlights. I wanna leave the shadows alone. So let's go ahead and turn on our highlights here so that we can see what we're qualifying. And we're going to bring our width down, move this over to orange, bring our width down a little bit more. Okay, get rid of the desaturated spots, get rid of the darker parts of the image. The shadow on my neck might be forgivable. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We're gonna denoise, do a little bit of clean black, a little bit of clean white, blur the crap out of the radius. I think that's good. I can live with that. So let's go ahead and turn our highlights off. Turning highlights off, by the way, you can do that one or two ways. You can either click this little magic wand here and that'll turn your highlights on and off, or you can hit Shift H, and that'll turn your highlights on and off. Sorry, sometimes I forget that not everybody who watches my videos knows these things, so I apologize for that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our teal node. Now, in a typical teal and orange video, usually what you do is you protect your skin tones and you protect your oranges and then everything else gets turned to teal. I didn't want that because I kind of like the warmer look 
of the video, but I did want to have a little bit of color contrast in there. So what we're doing is going to add teal only to the shadows. And we're going to use the HDR color wheels for that. So let's go ahead, move into our HDR color wheels. We're going to come into our shadows and we're just going to add a little bit of teal. That looks good right about there. I'm, I'm actually very, very happy with that. Now what we can do, now what we can do is actually come into our orange node again, and we can bring our saturation up just a little bit. That's good. And then we're gonna come into our regular color wheels. We're gonna bump up our gamma to brighten up that skin a little bit. It brightens up everything else too, but we're gonna brighten up that skin. And that looks a little bit overexposed, but something that we're gonna do in just a minute is kind of gonna fix that. So we will leave that for now. Let's go ahead and move on to our custom curves. So let's go to our custom curves here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the shadows a little bit and we're going to raise the blacks because I like that little muted look, and this is a, a great way to get that. So what we're gonna do, let's go here. Let's drop our shadows just a little bit and raise our blacks. That's looking, that's looking pretty good, actually. We can come back into our orange and maybe bump up our skin just a little bit more. I think that's good right there. And then the next thing that I want to do, you may not be able to see it on YouTube, but I've still got a little bit of teal like in my shirt and in my hat and in these acoustic panels back here. I want to get rid of that. So we're going to go into our final node here and we're going to go to our Luma, satur Luma versus saturation curve. We're going to hit that shadow button. Let's go ahead and drop our shadows just a bit and now we're looking a lot more natural and that's it let's take a look at the before and after so that's the grade that i use in all of my videos but i don't go through in every single video and create that grade step by step from scratch what i do is i use a power grade and what a power grade is it's a saved grade that you can drag and drop into your node section all of the nodes will show up and it's done. So let's go ahead and create this power grade. In order to do that, you need to make sure you're in your gallery and you need to make sure you're in your power grade folder. And if you don't see your folders, you can click this little switch right here and you should see your folders. We're in our power grade folder. Let's go ahead and right click on our video and hit grab still. And then we can right click on that still and go to change label and we'll just call this studio grade b-raw and hit enter and we're done with that let me just show you real quick we're going to right click reset all grades and nodes now let's just go ahead and drag from our power bins folder into our node tree boom the grade is done and this, like I said, was shot in the same picture profile as the B-Raw, but this is ProRes, which means we do not have access to any of our raw camera controls. So anything that we do to tweak this footage, as far as exposure and contrast and saturation is concerned, we're gonna have to do in the primaries node. Now, I, since I already went through the grading steps, what I'm gonna do is just open up my gallery here and I'm going to go into my power grades and I'm just gonna drag this power grade into my node section. You can see this looks horrible right now. So what we need to actually do, because this isn't raw, so DaVinci Resolve didn't pick up on the color science. So we're gonna right click on our clip. We're gonna go to input color space and we're going to choose Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. Boom, there we go. Now we are good, except our exposure is off for sure. So let's go to our primaries and we're gonna go to our HDR color wheels first. Let's go ahead and bring up our exposure. Let's 
do a quick comparison by hitting, let's go ahead and close that, close our gallery. Let's go ahead and hit this switch. And that looks pretty good to me, I think. I think we're done. Now we've still got another grade to do. We've got to look at that Rec 709 footage. But before we do that, I just want to say I did a lot of prep for this video. I'm not looking for a pat on the back. I just want to tell you, I did a lot of prep work for this video. I took, I took notes on all of my node settings and my camera settings and all of the things I did bullet points so I wouldn't get lost in the video. And to manage all of that, I used today's sponsor, Taskade, which they make it super, super easy to create projects and manage tasks and brainstorm ideas, all from one easy to use app that is available on the web and on Android and on iOS. And they've got a ton of cool features like a calendar view so you can see everything that's coming up and even collaboration features like the ability to video chat right from within the app. They make it super, super easy to get a bird's eye view of everything that you've got going on. So if that's that sounds like something that could be useful to you make sure you click the link in the description sign up for taskade today and don't forget to use code j litman at checkout for 50 percent off thank you so much taskade for sponsoring this video let's take a look at this rec 709 footage all right let's go ahead and click on our rec 709 footage and you can see it looks very very different totally different color science we're not going to be able to match this exactly but we can still get that kind of teal and orange look maybe bring our skin tones a little bit more orange, a little bit less red. I mean, it's technically correct. If I look at my vector scope here, my skin is right on that skin tone indicator. So we're, we're, we're definitely good there, but I think we can, we can tweak it. We can tweak it just a little bit. So let's go ahead and open up our gallery. We're going to grab that power grade for our B raw on here. Boom. That's what everything looks like with just the power grade. Let's close out our gallery and it's looking okay, but there's a couple things that I want to do here. First of all, I think my background is just a little bit too overexposed. It's, it's, it's not overexposed, but it's just a little bit too bright. I want it to be a little bit darker. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to add a serial before. So we're going to go to add node, add serial before. And we're going to relabel this second node vignette and we're going to label this first node primaries. Let's go ahead into our vignette node. And we're going to grab a circular power window. Reframe it. Make it super soft. And we want to click this button right here, which will allow us to edit everything that's outside of that power window. We're going to come into our custom curves and we're going to go drag it down. And that's already looking a lot better. Next thing I want to do is actually bring up the exposure on my skin. It's a little bit desaturated and a little bit too dark. So what we're going to do is come into our regular color wheels in our orange node and we're just going to bump that up a little bit and we're going to come into our hdr color wheels and we're going to add a little bit of saturation and that's looking a lot better let's go ahead and come into our teal node and one thing that i notice about the teal node if we do a quick comparison You'll notice there's a little bit more green in the teal on here and I kind of like that. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is come into our HDR color wheels in the teal node. We're going to grab our shadows and we're just going to bring a little bit more green into it. Do a quick comparison. That's looking pretty good actually next thing let's come into our custom curves let's change our scope back over to our waveform our our blacks are a little bit too high here so what we want to do is grab that black point in our custom curves and bring it down just a bit right about there 
Last thing that I want to do is maybe bring down the exposure on these practicals behind me. So we're going to come into our primaries. We're going to go into our HDR color wheels and our specular highlights. And we're going to drop the sat the not the saturation, the exposure just just a bit minus 1.8. That's that's looking a, that, that looks a lot better. OK, so I think I think we're good. Let's go ahead and do a quick comparison, a little side by side comparison. Now, obviously the skin tones are different. The color science is different, but we got the same basic thing here. We've got our teal in the shadows. We've got warmer highlights. I, uh, I, th I think, I think we're good. So there you go. Three ways to grade my studio on three different types of footage. I hope you enjoyed that. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. Go watch this video right here. And I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.